Welcome to the Fan Club YouTube channel. Please make sure to subscribe, like this video, and comment down below. Welcome back to the Fan Club Podcast, friends, family, folks, and friends. How are we doing, fellas? Good. Good, good, good. Good. Love yeah, to hear it. Yeah, very good. It's a hot one here in Minneapolis. We just got back from a nice little walk, had our shirts off. We feel refreshed, but uh, for later August, it's kind of uh, different. It is like the hottest heat. month, though. Yeah. Historically. That's why it's my <laughs> favorite month. Because it's hot? Birthday and, month. It's yeah. a big month for you, man. <laughs> and you're getting interviewed on the Fan Club podcast today. Just got better for you. Yeah. What could beat uh, that? I was lucky enough to hear some of your guys' stories and do all that, so I think I'm ready to share mine. Are you nervous? I don't know. I don't know what kind of questions you guys are going to pull. should be interesting. We're going to dive deep, deep, deep down. We spent all night preparing this episode. (laughs) Yeah. But uh, before we do that, we should talk a little bit about Cuddy's new wall decor. Yeah. So we got a package today, actually three different packages and they were all from Dunkin Donuts and as you can see behind me if you're watching on YouTube we got some new backdrop and I think it looks pretty good it spices things up I think he likes it uh, likes it especially a lot more because now he doesn't have to paint the wall like he was supposed to a few weeks ago yeah uh, pink pops pretty good yeah I like it and you and you got your hat on too yeah cool hat iced out iced, iced out yeah it says iced Iced, exactly. Yelly is iced out. But we also thought, since you know we are Duncan partners now, we thought we might want to reward some of our followers, our fans. We're going to start doing monthly giveaways. We're going to give you guys some Duncan swag, gift card or two, and uh, we're going to start developing that within the next week here. So stay tuned on our social medias if you want some Duncan swag. Yeah. THG runs on Duncan. Yes, we do. They sure do. That's our new tagline. It's going to be all over TV commercials pretty soon. I yeah. think uh, every single podcast in the past month, we've had a pregame Duncan coffee. Yeah. They're not even here right now because we are dummy dumb. Yeah, we were expecting this podcast <laughs> to start two hours ago. Yeah. <laughs> had some delays but now we're rolling yeah we also have a another new producer in the house behind the desk there everyone in the car or sitting on the couch listen to this give lawson a few snaps wow wow mr lawson thanks That's lawson for taking over my role today appreciate it look he's got his bling on today too <laughs> yeah i was gonna say that the when the boxes came in this morning he was smacking his hand down on, oh. the, ba- on the packages I making sure he's Showed off his new ring. He's That's why he did it. that. Oh, he's oh, throwing it on it. that. Yeah. It fit on your this finger? reminds me of the ring from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> my, my precious. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> try, to, try to put it I, on your finger. It, it I perfect. put it on last night when we went out for a little bit, and it was pretty dang loose yeah, on my finger. It looked loose on your finger in that little Snapchat you sent. Yeah. Oh, it's hot in here, oh, so gosh. my fingers swelled Oh, it's Cutting stuck. It's stuck. <laughs> get, get the butter out. I wouldn't do that here. I'll give it back to you before Everyone's I lose it. Everyone's swollen a little bit right now. A little puffy. Yeah. Puffy. Cool looking bling, and that was your uh, grandfather's, huh? Eh? It's pretty great, good. Great, 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 great. Does it feel weird having it on? Yeah. Yeah. Like it. It's fun. You tinker, yeah. tinker with it. It's fun. It looks good. Nice and shiny. It's like his fidget spinner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is like a fidget spinner. <laughs> Don't lose uh, it now. Don't lose it now. Put no, that, that thing back where it came from. Or so help me. <laughs> so help me. Well, maybe we should get into the. Uh, the star of the show and the next one to get married, Austin Friesen. Woo! Yeah. Oh, congratulations. Maybe Thanks, that second everyone. part was false, but uh, <laughs> how are we doing, Frizz? Good. I'm excited. Excited to share my story, hear what you guys got for me, and uh, let's have some fun. Let's do it. You know. Let's get right into it then. How about you take it away? Where did young Austin Cameron Friesen, how did he begin? Well, 1998, August 13th, I was born in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Um, City that don't Were you an Eskimo yeah. up there? <laughs> in a, born in an igloo? Came out in no. a Canadian <laughs> goose, Canada goose yeah. jacket. Believe it or not. With a nice fishing rod. Like I, like We're I not going to let you talk. That's, right? why, <laughs> that's why August is my favorite month. It's nice and hot. It's when I was born. But, yeah, I grew up in Winnipeg. I have uh, two younger siblings. They're, we're all two years apart two brothers so if 
family of guys. My mom, <laughs> uh, my mom definitely had some troubles growing up when we were getting some fights and uh, fight be, be bad kids. How oh, yeah, would she we break were, you up from fights? What was oh, the punishment? We definitely got the spoon a few times. Yeah, wooden actually, spoon. The wooden spoon. I know about yeah, that. Yeah, we were bad kids a lot. Did you but, uh, uh, rule the roost of the family? I definitely was bigger growing up than my two younger brothers. They would team up on me pretty often. We definitely got in some heated battles, but it's fizzled out now, luckily. Uh, mm. I'm glad to hear. You're the ringleader for your sibling shenanigans? Uh, yeah, I'd probably. My uh, my middle brother, we all played hockey. My middle brother kind of just played for fun, but my youngest brother, Hunter, he kind of followed in my footsteps of leaving home early and then going to different high schools and stuff like that. So I guess I am a bit of the leader for the sports sports field were your parents more strict with you you being the oldest oh yeah definitely i was it was way different for them like i obviously being the first you experience the first things whether that be having your first girlfriend or staying out later or all that kind of stuff i was definitely uh very watched over i would say Hmm. trailblazer they still keep a close eye on you yep how oh, did yeah, you? Uh, How did you get into hockey, and where did that take you moving forward in the in mm. school and life? And because you left pretty early as well. Yeah, um, got into hockey uh, same age as most of the guys, around four. Uh, my dad put me in there, put me on skates. I grew up obviously Winnipeg is a cold place, so we have a ton of outdoor rinks. There was one right across where I went to elementary school, so that was kind of a big part of my childhood is doing outdoor skating after practice or after school that kind of stuff and uh yeah grew up just playing local winnipeg hockey then played uh spring hockey where i got to go to north dakota go see cuddy's cuddy's area because that's what kind of got me into the pursuit of wanting to play college hockey was going to und and touring that and being like i want to get there i want to play like play like those guys um but before that, I left home because, like, where how Winnipeg hockey works, it's like you only get to play with people in your area of the city. No matter what, you can't go and play at a different home rink and for a different home team. You're just stuck with your area. And my area just didn't have it. Did not, not have the power. We, we were always losing every single year. The year above us and the year below us were winning the championships all the time. My, my age – didn't have it so when i turned 15 that's I'd, the uh, that's the earl's neighborhood yeah earl's saint fatel so saint fatel was the area that yeah. you played for okay yeah I a couple so guys that played there yeah i played triple a hockey um for the winnipeg warriors and then i always knew i wanted to play college hockey so the whl draft all that didn't <laughs> matter to me i was never wanting to go that route so when i turned 15 Going into grade 10, I left to go to Kelowna, B.C. for a uh, hockey academy there with a couple other Manitoba guys. And that was my first taste of living away from home. I know my mom was bawling her eyes out when I was leaving. I didn't really realize how young I actually was because until then, yeah, obviously living at home, all that kind of stuff, just doing the same old thing. But this was a completely different life, the way this was set up. I was really lucky to get with Awesome Billets. They had a son my age that was also going to the same hockey academy, and then they also billeted another son or another kid that was going to the same hockey academy. So I basically had two brothers right off the start, and we lived on an apple orchard outside (laughs) in Kelowna. Hmm. So it was a gorgeous house we hung out non-stop they had like a awesome like hangout guys room i guess with like a pool table air hockey table tv so we hung out like non-stop and that hockey there you would get up at 6 a.m wow. get to the either rink every week it switched you'd either go to the rink first practice then go to school or you'd go to the training facility which had like a mini rink workout gym like all that stuff and then you would go to school and then if you didn't do one or the other you'd do the opposite after school so you'd get home at like 6 30 every night but 
yeah, it was uh, it was awesome living out in BC because obviously where I'm from, it's flat. It's probably one of the flattest places in North America, and in BC, it's all filled with mountains and stuff. So I got to tour around Vancouver and parts of Alberta, and kind of got a different experience of true Western Canada, which was awesome. And then the next year would have been my grade 11 year. I decided to go south and go to Omaha, Nebraska. What was that uh, change for? That's pretty big gap it's, between Kelowna to yeah. Omaha, USA. Yeah, it is. It was definitely a big change. There was a couple reasons why Omaha was like ranked really high for U.S. AAA, as like you'd know with like, against, yeah, yeah with what you were in. It was a little bit closer. Omaha was about what Lawson, eleven hour drive, twelve from Winnipeg, eight, eight. Yeah. maybe for you. So you would nine for you. Nine yeah. nine hour drive. <laughs> Kelowna is like an eighteen That's nineteen crazy. hour drive. So this was a little bit closer. You can do it in one day, and yeah, decided to go play AAA in Omaha. And again, I got was lucky enough. Great billets, um, different way of life for sure with school i will say folks american school is a lot easier than canadian (laughs) school which i definitely enjoyed but that was also another cool part now instead of traveling around western canada to play games we were traveling around the u.s go and play against yelly in chicago go to play against shattuck in minnesota went to detroit um it was definitely a tougher experience just with the coaching that was going on there had one of the craziest coaches of all time i could tell you a hundred stories about him yeah i've heard Mm -hmm. yeah and uh it's an infamous name yes so that was definitely a tough change but i don't regret it met some pretty cool people there i still see them like obviously omaha is pretty close to minneapolis i still see guys that i played hockey with out and about here and i it's crazy always kind of funny seeing them around and then yeah, after that grade 11 year, so that would have been my third high school I'd went to, I Dang. came... Okay, before you move on, like, what's, uh, for those listening, like, can you explain what, or, like, what a hockey academy is, and then why you went to AAA in the States? Yeah, so... And what the difference is? So, with, the one I went to in Kelowna is called Pursuit of Excellence. I think it might be changed now, they got bought out by something else, but it's where you people go to really try and develop their skills they usually are known for having a good resume of moving people on to higher levels of play and kind of getting more exposure so in bc there's a lot more hockey going on a lot more teams all that so there's just naturally more exposure there and then you get more ice time better coaching better time in the gym so that's like the main reason why people choose to go to a hockey academy plus the school's like built into that too uh or is that like an outside there there is definitely some we went to a regular public school oh yeah so i was wondering yeah it's just hockey players at your school yeah yeah. there are definitely some that are like that but same with omaha it's the same thing with training weights coaches exposure but we'd go to a regular public school okay dang yeah Hmm. And but it does get to be a lot. Almost, it was definitely harder than college, even before and after you're doing before your, and after. Did you ever feel like that kind of took some love out of the game for you, or not really? Or did, there's were definitely you just motivated to get better and move on. I de- I will say I definitely had more friends in Kelowna, yeah. uh, in Omaha because it was a better team, a lot more division one goes into it where people were committed and they had higher egos and stuff like that i yeah i could i can guarantee i still have i still talk to my billet brothers in yeah. Kelowna and stuff almost every day like it, that was a one of the best hockey years of my life for sure when i was 15 nice but yeah after omaha i decided to make the jump to junior hockey but the main reason was to also graduate with my friends in winnipeg so I went to the MJHL and played for the Portage Terriers. Dude, I didn't know. I thought you were only null. No. I didn't know you played in Canada for juniors. Yeah. I Cody went, and I played against Frizz. Yeah, Frizz I remember playing times. against Frizz. Yeah. On. So I went there when I was 17. I would go to high school in Winnipeg during the morning, 
me and two other Winnipeg guys would drive to Portage. It was about an hour drive wow. every day. Come on. Yeah, every day we'd drive to Portage, practice at like 2.30 for like an hour or whatever. Then we'd get back around like 5.36. Oh, so did you live at home then? Yeah, lived at home, went to my high school that I originally started out in grade nine. Wow. And then, yeah, I completed my goal. I was able to graduate with my friends. So were you on a hybrid school schedule, having to leave early for a 2.30 practice time? Yeah, definitely made, like, all my classes were in the morning. Made sure that was uh, set up beforehand. Luckily, I was able to kind of make the team before school started so we could (laughs) set that up because, obviously, sometimes, like, with Cuddy's situation, like, if I would have, let's say, been on like the bubble or whatever for that long, I don't think I would have been able to like guarantee my school that I'd be able to make these classes if I had to go in the afternoon and stuff. So, yeah, I was definitely lucky enough to. Oops. <coughs> That's nice. Your yeah. school works with you like that for junior hockey. Yeah, especially when there's not like it's not even playing junior hockey in the same city. Yeah. Yeah. Our, You're not even in our the same drive. That's, yeah. Uh, what was it like for away games? Yeah, so I would actually have to temporarily bill it in Portage because the Trans Canada Highway, where Portage is to Winnipeg, it's known as like one of the craziest highways in the winter that they have to Why? shut down because there's like nothing. There's Snow? no trees, nothing. It's just open, oh. and the storms that go through there are crazy. You really? can't see. Yeah, it's like it gets shut down multiple times a year. So wow. like, if we come back from a bus ride up north at like 1 a.m. and there's a storm they'll have the highway closed so i'll just have to stay at a random billet house jeez and yeah i did that and that was fun that was my first kind of taste of junior but i almost felt like when i was 15 it was more like junior hockey than it was yeah you're 18 hours away from home yeah i wasn't living at home um i definitely felt the pressure though from junior hockey especially being on portage because they have always kind of been like a strong team in the MJ. So anything could happen. Yeah. Being traded or sent down or whatever. But then after that, I went to Alberta. I went to Alberta to play in the AJHL. The following year? Following year when I was 18. Did you get traded or did you just leave? No, I left. I wanted to go to the AJHL because in Canada, the way – it's, I don't even know. It's like a reputation, I guess. It's an old reputation. I wouldn't say it's very similar to this now, but B, the BCHL was always like the top. Everyone wanted to go to the BCHL. They got the most D1 commits. That's what you wanted to go to. And then the AJHL was next. And then Saskatchewan and Manitoba were pretty similar. So It's like the farther you go west, the better the hockey gets. Yeah, yeah I've heard that. Wow. So I wanted to get – to the next best level which was the aj and i had an opportunity to go there to a team outside of edmonton went there made the team and played i think like 12 or 15 games there like i was there for like two months roughly and then our team wasn't doing too well the coaches tried to make some changes and all that and then next thing i know i'm back headed back to manitoba where i went and played for dauphin and that's probably where I would have started playing against you guys. That would have been your guys' first year in the oh, MJ. Yeah. So right now from grade, when did you go out to Kelowna? What 15, grade were you? 15, grade 10. Grade 10 to present day, you're on five different teams within yeah. five years. Yeah. I have, uh, <laughs> yeah, there's still more after this. But <laughs> bear with me, folks. We'll get through my hockey journey. It's not very simple, but. He knows how to pack. Yeah, know how to pack. And then I went to Dauphin. Manitoba, which is about three hours from Winnipeg. And again, I was one thing I will say, every place I went, I got lucky with billets. I had yeah. great billets. That always will change your experience oh, in a yeah. town on a junior team, everything. And I was always very lucky to have awesome billets. So again, had awesome billets in Dauphin. This time I knew a lot more guys just being on a Manitoba team, had some friends on the team. That's a pretty historically popular franchise too Mm -hmm. in the mj the dolphin 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 kings Kings. they have one of the coolest rinks really yeah i was uh dolphin was an awesome spot made again some lifelong friends there uh finished off my 18 year old year there and then 
19 rolls around. Also, during the summers, I was always going down to the U.S. trying out for USHL really? or NHL teams. Yeah, I've gone to like probably like nine different USHL camps. How about null camps? How many null camps have you been to? Three. You played a lot of hockey in your life, yeah. man. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely have a f- some miles on my skates, that's for sure. Let's talk a little bit about those camps because we all went through those. Mm-hmm. And there's some of, th- like, I hated those three days yeah. of going to different camps. It's such, like, a unique feeling in the dressing room when there's kids from all over North America trying to make this team. There's only three spots open. There's, like, yeah. three spots. Yeah. A lot of them are money grabs, and oh, they yeah. just invite everyone. There's, like, 100 kids there. You got to play six exhibition games like three spots open on the actual team yeah Yeah, it's Mm -hmm. crazy yeah Yeah, it was always see fargo is the closest ushl team to winnipeg so that was always a fun one because there's so many winnipeg guys that would go so you'd always be on a team with someone you knew or you'd be playing against someone you'd know and then obviously all the dads would love seeing each other and stuff like that so fargo was always fun and then, yeah, as you get farther and farther away, you might know one or two guys here and there, or stuff, stuff like that. But the camps are always a grind right in the middle of the summer. You got to drive pretty far. I went to all the way to Green Bay, wow. Des Moines, uh, Fargo, um, Omaha again. I've been to quite a few different camps. That's another thing, too, all the traveling just to get to these camps. And then there's, like like you guys said, three spots open. It's like you're really throwing a Hail Mary. I'm lucky my dad likes to drive, that's for sure. Yeah. He uh, He's put on a lot of miles on that Tahoe of his <laughs> that he packs up. He'll pack. One thing with my dad, he loves making me get prepared. He'll bring supplements, really? weights. <laughs> He'll bring Come dumbbells on. so I can do warm-ups and work out and but during the drive like he'll stop what? yeah we'll do like after like five hours we'll stop go for a little stretch do some squats Legit. i've wow. never heard of that actually ever yeah that's a no. hockey dad through yeah. and through oh yeah he was hockey dad to the max but never in like a a mean like overstepping way which was a lucky but no he just yeah always wanted You'd to stop c- at a rest stop yeah he yeah. always wanted me to succeed Get your workout in the parking lot, hit the shower, and back on the road. Yeah, nutrition, <laughs> no deep fried food, no McDonald's, nothing. Jeez. We're eating healthy. <laughs> Subway. Dang. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was, uh, I always, so then eventually the hang of it, I got the hang of it by doing this over and over again. So then, it, then I would start to get pissed at him. I'd be like, I know, I know what you're going to say. You don't need to tell me to go run the stairs before I leave for the rink. I'm already doing it. Yeah. And he'd still to this day will make jokes telling me to go run the stairs or something like that. It's funny. So after your nineteen year old year? So no that so going into my nineteen year old year, I went back to Dauphin again, which was my only time I ever went back to a team I'd already been a part of. Because every year was a new, new start. Team. New mm-hmm. start. So that Probably was nice. Good. Yeah, that was nice being back there. Tried uh Tried my hardest to get a leadership role. Coach didn't agree. <laughs> then, uh, again, started out pretty good, eventually died out. That's where I got traded to Nipawa, which is where it's about two hours from Winnipeg, an hour from Dauphin. That was where I met Jay Martz. Wow. You're on the same team with Jordo. Yep. That's the, that's the connection we made there. Had an awesome second part of the year there. I was able to get like a – Finished the year 30 points, my most points ever. And that was enough of a boost f- to get me to the Knoll, where I got tendered before like wow. the season started. In Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Didn't know anything about it. I just knew that I was really happy to be in the Knoll finally. Like I said, doing these camps for three, four years up and coming. And I was finally was able to get there. And that was my only year of junior hockey, my 20-year-old year, where I played on the same team. Wow. So that was your last year because junior hockey ends at that yeah, cutoff. That was, and that 20-year-old year in Johnstown was my favorite year of hockey of all time. That Since you played in the MJ and you played in the NA, is, there much, of a, is there much of a difference between – yeah, even the AJ? Uh, I'd find, like, the goalies in the Nall are probably better and – the top line top top line and a half or better i would say but like it's very 
they're very like fast, like on the puck, like you don't have much time. But I think yeah, the MJ is more heavier hitting, like tougher. But overall, I and there's something different here too with the MJ and the Null. The MJ, you just randomly go to like any small town restaurant after a game. Like mm -hmm. some of your post game meals are terrible. Yeah, like absolutely mm -hmm. terrible. <laughs> As these MJ fellows know, like you never know what you're gonna get. But in the Nall, like the team, the home team is responsible for giving you your post game meal. Yeah. So like, if some team comes to town, you give them a bad post game meal, they'll send it. They'll they'll give it right back when you go to their team. So like, that's that's they kind of like to treat it, treat you nicer and stuff like yeah. that because they know if you visit them, especially with the Nall works, it's all divisions. So I was in Nall East. So you're playing the same team 10 times. Yeah. So you definitely want to make sure you're taking care of them as well. But that was cool. I got to experience the East Coast. I got to see New Jersey, Boston, uh, northern area of New York. Um, Dang. Yeah, that was fun. So yeah. what was it like you, from the age of 15, you basically are away from home. You've seen... Probably more more states in the U.S. and more parts of Canada than the average Joe out there. So what was it like, your experience, and what you take away from your junior journey? Because it was definitely a long yeah. and vast one for you. Yeah, it was uh, – I was really happy I got to explore and just learn, learn so many things about all these towns or cities. Um, it definitely, like, Bryden – definitely, like – um, widen what's it broadened broadened your okay. horizon yeah definitely broaden my horizon of like different people and areas or certain slang words or like anything just kind of just cr really bringing in different parts of knowledge and meeting new people every place had unique characters every town had its own little thing to it and it was uh it was awesome experience i had again met lifelong friends on each team that and my billet parents i bet you i could still reach out to any one of them and they would take me in in a second if i oh, needed so you were it. a yeah. good you were a good billet kid yeah i was a good billet kid for sure i'd say maybe in dauphin we were pretty close with our billet parents hmm. we definitely had some fun were you cooking up meals for your billet parents or that, like yeah that is definitely another big thing of of cooking so i would like always have to make breakfast and stuff before after practice and all that or cook with my billet brothers that kind of thing that's a definitely a part of my cooking but i will say johnstown was probably the funniest town funniest? that i've been to just the way funniest. the funniest it's just like an old steel town yeah. that uh they just have a lot of characters like the rink their home rink is where slap shot was filmed ah. so they have a little slap shot museum in the rink so there's just a lot of history behind it. Um, it's just like, yeah, big hockey town. And uh, they say some funny stuff. Like instead of saying y'all, like, hey, y'all, they say yins. Yins. Hey, In yins. Hmm. Pennsylvania? Yeah. Huh. At least that part of PA, yeah. Because it's from like the, uh, I would assume you're pretty close to some Amish communities. Yep. Yeah. That was also the farthest I'd ever went, I ever was. How I'd have far to away? fly i think it was like 24 hour drive <laughs> i had to fly to pittsburgh and then drive an hour and 15 minutes to johnstown jeez holy did you win any championships on any of the teams that you played Pretty on? dang close in johnstown we finished first in the regular season broke records for like our our home winning streak i think we only lost like two home games the whole year what the heck happened lost to prof's team lost oh, to alaska prophet. Prophet. tyler prophet yeah but uh that, so then towards my 20-year-old year at the end of that was uh, where Jamar started to reach out. That's how I really? started. That's how so Jordo reached out to that you? That was my superior GBS. connection. Hmm. Were That's, you and Jordo close in Nepal, like, right away? Oh, yeah. We, we worked build? together, actually. We worked at this, uh, we worked together at this, like, pork producing factory <laughs> you heard stories about <laughs> where this. they like it's a massive pork producing factory so they have all these files and stuff so me and Jordo and another guy would 
sort files Come and like on. and mark them in boxes and move them around like that's what we would do for a few hours every day you weren't chopping up pieces of pork and <laughs> packaging no them? no they were that's not, crazy not the that. paper we're, boys we're on the paperwork side <laughs> so not, that's yeah. funny you said that because i never did it but uh, i know batesy had a job in winkler you would do it maybe a few times a week where you'd go work at one of the big potato plants and <laughs> really i can't remember exactly what he did i think he's just stuffing um potatoes and sacks but uh yeah just little junior hockey jobs yeah there's yeah, each town usually helps guys figure out different little jobs and stuff they can do like one of the guys on our team worked at tim hortons and other yeah. guys uh they did like driveway shoveling and stuff like yeah yeah it was so yeah mine was a paper <laughs> organizer i that's guess that's a very random job so that's how we got close and uh yeah he was my main lifeline to go to superior did you know jordo before meeting him in no uh where was the team again Neepo. 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 You didn't i mean know him? no didn't know him and he lives like 10 minutes from me <laughs> that's crazy it's funny yeah so then how far into your 20 year old year was it that he started reaching out to you about uws probably february ish towards the end of the season yeah but then again i still had d1 hopes yeah like it was i was playing pretty good and then we were obviously on a really good team so definitely had my hopes there and then i think after i want to say first week of june i committed to uws yeah i remember marty saying um you guys were looking at the marriott or something and there was an extra bedroom or yeah, were you already that at the was marriott? sophomore year so you were already there. So yeah, that would have been him coming in. Yeah, yeah. Was short. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's right. I remember him saying, "Yeah, I got this buddy in Winnipeg. He would fit right in in our little, our little group." <laughs> that was his. Uh, that was also one of his pressure tactics. He's like, mm. "We got to fill this room, man. Like we're signing yeah. the lease. Also, got to commit." That's that was his selling point yeah. to you to come to UWS. Put a little pressure on me by saying we got to fill this last room in the house. What was and your uh, your thoughts coming to UWS prior to? arriving have you anything have you heard about uws no. before this point okay no i knew like little to nothing about d3 hockey like i didn't even know what steven's point was or anything like that even when guys who played in the u.s their whole lives on johnstown were saying oh i might go to steven's point they're sick and like to me i was just like well, I, I don't know i don't, I don't <laughs> yeah. know what the yak is nothing yeah but one of the reasons why i went to uws was it was close to Winnipeg, seven hour drive. You can buzz mm -hmm. it. And very good price, very affordable, especially yep. being Canadian. You have to do that. You always got to take in consideration the US dollar because it's just, it ain't too good right now for Canada. But it, that was a big reason. And then, uh, uh, yeah, new, new Marty. And that's what, uh, that's why I ended up going there. Wow. So that brings you into your freshman year. Freshman year, University of Wisconsin Superior. Yeah, that was a that was a fun year. No more billets. No more billets. You're on your own. That's. I remember I really enjoyed, kind of just all the guys like just having freedom just to do whatever. Yeah. Don't have to worry about anything or, obviously classes and stuff like that. But you actually came in the same year that Lawson came. Yeah, yeah. I still remember where I met Lawson. I met him on the bench at uh, pre scrimmage. Tell that Captain story. Captain Skate. I knew who Lawson was. I remember playing against him in Winkler. I knew he came from Omaha. I even, uh, believe it or not, Lawson, I I applied to a bunch of D1 schools. And when I applied to Omaha, I used your name, how I played against you, like in juniors <laughs> and stuff like that. Use your reference. Yeah, yeah. obviously didn't work because I never heard back. But, uh, oh boy. yeah, so then I ended up meeting Lawson on the bench, just saying, hey, introducing ourselves. And then I heard you told him you're going to take his spot. Yeah, I should have. Yeah, yeah, yeah don't bring him. McDonald's here. screwed you. Yeah, but no, that's uh, freshman year was great. Had a lot of fun meeting the guys, exploring the new area, um, meeting kind of how or meeting the the coaching staff, all that. It was yeah. new experience just because. With junior hockey, you're kind of used to a little bit more stuff. I mean, where I played, like, you got the trainer, you got this coach always being here, this coach, maybe, like, another uh, booster, someone helping out. But, yeah, Superior definitely had a little bit of less than that. 
Yeah. So who uh, who were your roommates? I'm sure a lot of people yeah. know, but for those who don't, who did you live with in Superior? So I lived with, first of all, we lived in a five bedroom house and then it was a duplex and then there was um, five on the other side. So I lived with Yelly, Taver, Marty, and Cappy. So we all lived together. I was on the main floor. I had the only room on the main floor, which definitely had its ups and downs. I could, if I was trying to sleep early and guys were on the couch, I'd definitely be able to hear them. But I did have my own bathroom. Those guys would always be battling it out upstairs, four of them trying to share one bathroom. So I was very grateful to have my own bathroom, to say the least. Yeah. Do you remember meeting me for the first time? I don't remember meeting you for the first time. I remember meeting Taver. Good, good first impression. Yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> I remember it was just like a huge flurry of people just because like I got in there, unloaded my stuff. My mom got me down. Hey, nice yeah, I remember just meeting Taver because he came a bit later when I was a little bit more settled. Yeah. Do you remember meeting me? Kind of. I remember your mom and you were there. But other than introducing myself to you, I don't yeah. remember much. So what was your first impressions of me? I thought that, yeah, you were just a good kid, easy to talk to. We um, we definitely, as a house, connected really fast, I'd say. Yeah. We, well, at that point, you do everything together. Yeah. Like, you literally can't get away from each other, especially when there's five of you there. I remember it was really nice having these guys to ask questions with, like, whether it would be the school or even, like, scheduling or practice like it was really nice kind of i was never not knowing something i always had help that's actually so key when you're on a team and you can talk to the guys a year two older than mm -hmm. you like which professor to take or mm -hmm. avoid yeah. that one or yeah. don't take that class it's too hard or oh, <laughs> that was so nice marty and dave helped me so much so much with with all the, like Marty for all the Canadian extra paperwork you yep. had to do, like technically you're an international student. So mm -hmm. you have to do so much more paperwork and do so many other things. It's it's wild. So Marty helped me out with that so much and Dave just helped me out with so many little things. Yeah. So if you boys are listening, <laughs> I appreciate you uh, getting me through college. What yeah. do you remember about uh, like orientation week? Because I know Cuddy and I, I just remember we had some we did some stupid joke during the <laughs> orientation week when we're twenty one year old freshmen meeting all these eighteen year olds. Mm -hmm. So like what were your thoughts on that so, whole experience? So yeah, our freshman class was pretty big, I think. We had like eight or nine guys, so yeah. it's a decent amount to hang out with. We also had a good amount of Canadian guys that year too. So like that's where I met Johnny. Me and Johnny connected mm -hmm. pretty quickly and it was nice having those guys there, but I've, it definitely felt weird being the older person. You see some like young looking kids in those <laughs> big in the big gym doing the orientation stuff. So yeah. that was kind of a different first impression of it all. But I remember, I also remember because I did like I was the only one to do like marketing or wanting to do business for like my class kind of. Yeah. So many of my classes, I had no one on our team. Really? In my classes, yeah. That doesn't happen often. No. But then obviously as the years went on, I would get more and more. But for the freshman year, I maybe had like a couple guys yeah. the, the whole time. I had definitely had classes with no one yeah. too. Well, I remember surely into, which would have been our sophomore year because you came a year after us, there's two things that I recognized from Frizz. The first was that, at times, he wasn't the cleanest person. He, there, there was times when his room would be an oh, absolute yeah. just like... It's not wrong. Yeah, just a garbage dump. <laughs> but we also, as a, as a house, we recognize one of your probably best talents as a human being. Mm -hmm. But so we used to do was we would go grocery shopping and it would be like me, me Dave, Johnny... Jordan, we'd always get groceries together. And Frizz, even from the beginning, never wanted to get groceries with us. Oh, so yeah. he always did it on his own. I forgot about that. And then shortly after that, that's when your your cooking capabilities kind of came to the surface. Yeah. I uh, I never – because Marty, Marty would always cook for a lot of the guys. And I don't know. I always just wanted something different. I wanted to make my own things, try my own things out, new stuff. So I always separated – the way uh, I cooked dinners and stuff like that. So that's also a big 
a big thing of how I started cooking too is because my mom's not there to cook. You don't have a billet parent there to cook either. You're cooking on your own. So that's kind of where my full-time cooking got into it, where I really enjoyed it, where I, where I would go to the grocery store, come up with what I wanted to eat that night or throughout the, throughout the next week. And, uh, yeah, that's how it kind of all started, I'd say. I remember you guys, you and were racing like Marty Taver, Yelly home yep. to get the kitchen every first. Night, every night we would all race home to see who would get like the element or the good, uh, <laughs> good pan and stuff. And it was funny. <laughs> we ended up getting in total, we had one massive fridge in the kitchen and we had two mini fridges and <laughs> each guy had their own section. You have a deep freezer too. And oh, we yeah. had a deep freezer. Each guy had their own section of what they had. So like, if you got too many groceries at one point, the guys would get mad or like push your stuff <laughs> no, no, over. No, no, no. It was always Frizz who would get way too much groceries. Yeah, I would always get carried away. They always called me the number one spot shopper. I would always go to the grocery store. Is that store. true? That's, that's definitely true now that I live with you. Yeah, I think that's a good transition because <laughs> yeah. you and Cuddy have made uh, your Costco grocery hauls a worldly event. Yeah, me and Cuddy always say that they roll out the red carpet for us as soon as we get to Costco because we, we get carried away sometimes. It's always just a nice little uh, treat, I would say, just cause from Superior. And it's funny, too, because we, for the longest time, me and Frizz didn't have our own Costco cards. So we'd be using Lawson's or Dave's trying <laughs> to sneak in and coming out with like $400 worth of stuff. <laughs> yeah, and then we'd have to use Lawson and Dave's freezer. Yeah. We'd have to yeah, pile up new? stuff. You used to do that back in Superior, too. Yeah. The so you're a little unique out of all of us because, one, you're a grade younger than us four sitting here, mm -hmm. and you actually left school early and took your senior year online so you could continue this. Yeah, so that all started with, obviously, the hockey guys. I really – I remember I – I told Lawson, like, as this was heating up, as before we even made a single dollar, that I, like, really wanted to keep going and keep doing this, and I would do whatever it takes to stay with the group because it was a known fact that I would have been left behind if I didn't. You think so? Oh, well, like, just in school-wise, like, yeah. I had nothing else I could do, and I knew I wanted to graduate. So very early on i started loading up my classes every semester i would take summer courses i took two years of summer courses wow. and a max schedule every year to kind of catch up and when it was known that i couldn't possibly graduate <laughs> with you guys i did the next best thing which was graduate the next semester in the fall where i took online courses and did the famous internship with thg yeah. so i did I remember talking to you, but do you want to say what we, what I said? Like, you want to take the yeah, mic? Yeah, yeah hop in here and tell funny. the story. It just ties into what you're saying. No, uh, Frizz, uh, before this happened, like when we were blowing up um, on TikTok, he, he pulls me aside at like a party that we were having, and he looks at me and he's like, oh, I remember the like thank part. you, man. Like <laughs> I've been wanting to be big online all my <laughs> life. Like this is what I've been wanting. Come and then on. like there was like the fact that, we were doing something on social media was Frizz's like life goal. So this just ties in on why he was thinking ahead and making that sacrifice to, to make sure that he was sticking with it to the very end. So yeah, that was I, a funny story. I remember, I remember that so clearly. Oh, I, I, remember I remember that, that too. too. Cause I think Frizz started as the party was going on. He was like pulling guys aside and yeah. talking to them. In the the Marriott. Yeah. He pulled me to the side and he was like, are you committed, man? I, oh, yes, do you I remember that. Like, do you want to keep that. going? Call, yeah. Hey, man, you in? I'm in. Oh. Yeah, and I'm like, what you know are you what, talking Frizz, about? Yeah. It's Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> For being like, you do come across. This is not a dig at all, but you do come mm -hmm. across as a very unprepared human. Mm -hmm. And like, from when I <laughs> met you back my sophomore year, like when it came to school, when it came to hockey, when it came to anything, you were just like seemed to be the least prepared out of the group. Mm -hmm. But you seem to have your, your ducks in line when it came to the THG. Yeah, I I knew Lawson was right. I always kind of wanted to do something different, never have, like, a regular job. I said that to my friends, like, for a long time, but I never knew how it was going to happen. 
I also didn't take the steps of like my own social media. Like I wasn't posting TikToks or anything like that before this started. I just didn't know how it would happen. So when Lawson gave me that uh, that playing field, I was sure happy <laughs> that he did that. So that's why I knew from a very early start that I wanted to do everything in my power to keep it going. So you yeah. did it, and that's why yeah. I had to get make sure the rest of the boys were on board too. So. How long have you had your little friend hanging around with you? Oh, your cat friend, my boy Ollie. Ollie came in my sophomore year. I previously, some of you may know that I had a cat named Odin. He tragically passed, but I asked the guys, I think, hey, I'm probably going to get another cat. So the summer, in the summer, late August, right before I got to school, I picked up Ollie from a small little town outside of winnipeg so he is a canadian cat and he's got a passport uh he might need one but uh for now he doesn't but brought him to the u.s when he was seven weeks old and that's how i think he has one of the best personalities i've ever seen a cat have because he grew up with five college guys he was always around other people either the parties all that kind of stuff we had and he also grew up with his stepbrother Mort because Dave got a cat about two months later as well. So we had two cats running around the Marriott. And it was also very funny how social media took a liking to him too, sending him little cat jerseys or cat toys, food, treats. Oh. He was spoiled in college, that's for sure. But uh, can't thank you're you guys enough. You're a good enough. cat dad. Yeah. Well, yeah, I do love being a cat dad. He's got a good uncle that helps him out a lot too. Now, yeah, so. Uncle Cud takes care of him when I'm away, and he loves cuddling up to him. Him and him and Cuddy actually just had a Star Wars movie night last yeah. night. I heard it was fun. It's funny too because me and Frizz will be sitting on the couch, and sometimes Ollie will just hop on me, and <laughs> and we'll sit there and watch TV, and Frizz will be alone by yeah. himself. One one night last <laughs> week, I think uh, I got home late and Cuddy was sleeping, I went into Cuddy's room and took Ollie from him and brought him to my room. I was wondering because I, I went to sleep with Ollie, and then I woke up and Ollie was outside my door. I'm like, you must have opened my door and let him out or something. Yeah, but that's he funny. Was watching you sleep. But, yeah, so then ever since then, Ollie's been a part of uh, some of our videos. He likes being in some of my videos, and, yeah, he's my son. Let's kind of transition now from uh, – you left college early. You took your internship with us at THG. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like your roles here now. Yeah, so um, early on it was a lot of um, I do the basic edits for the YouTube videos. I would just chop down, chop them down for maybe like an hour and a half to like 30 minutes, kind of let Lawson do his thing from there. I uh, do all the Instagram stuff. Um, answer DMs, do uh, different kind of like strategy meetings, I guess, like that. You have merch. a newer role now, yeah, merch. Yeah, and now that um, now that we have Rory, our intern, I don't have to do a lot of the postings to social media, which does take time, and that's nice that I don't have to do that anymore. But now I'm diving in harder with merch. Nice. You know, some people may think that uh, – and it is true that we give you an extra hard time here at THG. And um, with that intern role, we kind of blew it out of proportion <laughs> that we would basically bully you on a day-to-day -day basis. But you are the youngest one here and definitely are like uh, all of our little brother mm -hmm. to a sense. I mean, you're, you're less than a year younger than us, but it feels like it sometimes. Um, does that ever... Do you have you embraced that role of the guys kind of ganging up on Frizz every once in a while? Yeah, I think it's I think it's funny. Like it was kind of like that in college too, so may as well keep it going. Um, I always found it funny when like people would make jokes about if I was like out too late or something or late or anything like that. So yeah, I've always embraced it. And I think you guys have done a good job with balancing it where it's never too too much, too overboard. So, yeah, we can, we can keep them going as long as you guys want. <laughs> Forever. <laughs> you got thick skin. <laughs> I know there's people online who uh, always say that we're making fun of you too much, but 
They don't know. No, we all they, get it. They it's all easy. They don't know you like we do. Yeah. <laughs> it's just you're easy to because you make decisions and and you make jokes and stuff that are just too funny and yeah. You can't easy pass to them set, up. set us up for a remark, but yeah. You do get quite the story for us. Not many hockey players out there have played for as many teams in as many different places as you have. It's probably helped you been able to just go talk to anyone, too. You are pretty good at that. You're, not, you're pretty fearless when it comes to meeting strangers. Yeah, I've just, I don't know. I guess it's just that thing where, like, you kind of have to. Because if you're not, if you're always being set up in a new environment every single year where you are, like, you kind of just got to do it you got to find a way to meet people to connect with people and make friends otherwise yeah. it's not going to be as fun it's not going to be as memorable and it'll make it worth your while because you never know who's going to be that new lifelong friend yeah you are good at that making sure when we are in a new city and we're getting hosted by like a sponsor or something you're always good at like getting their phone number and keeping in contact <laughs> and yeah i love doing that I love uh, connecting with those people and kind of showing them who we are, even though it may kind of be like a slow start at first, but then I'll come over, hey, guys, come over here and meet this person, and then we'll all end up having a good laugh. So I do I do like taking that role of helping uh, THG network a little bit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, yeah, we all know that you like to have a good time, and, yeah, you're definitely the king networker when it comes to these events because – like I said, you're fearless when you go talk to other people, and uh, I don't know how you do it. It's a good quality to have. Definitely did for not used to be group. like that. <laughs> I was very shy a lot, too, growing up, I think. Like, whether it be talking to my coach about something or I don't even know. Like, I was definitely told by a lot of people that I'm shy and I don't <laughs> talk enough. But I honestly think doing the social media thing, being on I obviously do a lot of the TikTok live, so I think that helps when you just imagine there's a hundred people looking at you right now. But if there's a hundred people in a room looking at you, it's different. But in 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 a different way, it's the same. Yeah. Like, Mm -hmm. so I don't know, but yeah, I'm gonna keep keep doing my best. Hopefully, uh, hopefully one day it pays off real big. Keep it up, brother. (laughs) That's all you can ask for. This is a frizz appreciation section segment of the show. <laughs> yeah, but, should we uh, get back to making fun of them now? <laughs> <laughs> we did get some good fan questions, but uh, this time, this time it's my turn to read them to you. Yippee! Mm-hmm. I'm so, excited to hear these. The first one is your favorite Canadian snack. Ooh, uh, I'd have to say Ruffles all dressed chips. Mm. Those are. Have you had those your whole life? Yep. I love Ruffles All Dressed Chips. They're super unique, <laughs> and uh, I kind of wish I had some right now, honestly. Yeah, those do sound good. If you could meet any famous person, dead or alive, who would it be and why? Ooh. Um, Abe Lincoln? No, I don't think anyone – I don't think anyone dead. I'd probably say – yeah, well, I'd probably say Will Ferrell. Mm. I loved his movies. My favorite actor. I've – I've watched so many of his movies over and over again, and I still get the same laugh. I uh, I would definitely love to meet him and just hang out, have a conversation with him, and hopefully he's really funny in person as well. Nice. <laughs> I bet he would be. Yeah. <laughs> About your signature dish to make on a fancy occasion. Hmm. Okay, fancy occasion. I made this a couple times uh, for a little date night. I did... A lobster linguine with uh, white Whoa. sauce. Yeah, that's that's probably that my signature. Yeah, I'd probably say that's my go-to if I really wanted to spice it up for someone. Nice. <laughs> Never made me that before. That's well, where you stand in his life. Yeah, well, maybe <laughs> yeah. we'll have Man to make it yeah. up to the lobster. Hey, I haven't uh, I haven't made it for a date night in a while, so maybe I'll have to do it for you. Yeah, you might need to make a video. That's always my excuse. I just tell him to make a video out of it, and you get I a get free meal, and I get <laughs> a, a good, good fancy meal. <laughs> That's maybe hilarious. help him out in the kitchen a bit. Wash a wash a fork or a knife. Yeah. <laughs> you mentioned your dad um, was super helpful in helping you succeed in hockey, but what is the best advice for a parent if they have a young hockey player? Oh, I'd probably say 
let them kind of let them find their groove of what they love about the game, whether it be taking shots off the ice or maybe staying on the ice longer. Maybe they don't like going on the ice at all and they just like kind of hanging out with their friends, whacking the ball around, stick around, just kind of let them find what they love. And then after they find what they love, it, they could find the other little things where they need to get them to that next step. Nice. What is the best spur of the moment adventure that is not THG related? Oh, that's a big that you've one. Been on, yeah. Spur of the moment adventure. Um, so none of our trips that get broadcasted. Yeah. yeah. Spur of the moment adventure. Um, I'd probably have to say me and my dad went to, when I was in grade five, we went to Tampa Bay <laughs> for like over a random weekend in, in, uh, January. That's why, that's why I found my love for the Bucks Cause we went to our, my first NFL game. My first real NHL game, got to see two Tampa Bay Lightnings games and a Tampa Bay Buccaneers game. Oh, so weekend. Yeah, a little father-son bonding weekend when I was uh, in grade five. Love it. Uh, this one is from our friend Adam. Um, Adam Weeb. He wants to know <laughs> your best part-time job or your part-time job history, best and worst job that you've had. Uh Worst job was definitely working for UWS, taking stats. At the baseball I, games? I had to take Adam's stats. I'm not going to like that answer. I had to take stats for uh, I had to take stats for the sports teams, and baseball was for sure the worst. It was double headers. It was also in the springtime, and Superior in the springtime mm-hmm. is not a fun area. It is freezing cold, and I would sit up in this booth, which is literally just covered in plywood. There's no <laughs> insulation in it at all. I'd sit there and freeze every Saturday morning or Sunday morning, hunched over <laughs> for seven hours, frozen. And then if it wasn't the baseball misery, it was volleyball where you have an iPad and there's each team has six numbers of yeah. who's on the court. So every time the ball gets hit, there's someone reading out to you like eight, 23, wow. four, over. And then you have to go to the other side <laughs> and do that. So you literally have to be like, almost typing on a computer for an hour straight listening to these people Hurt like your head hey? yeah and it was always on the weekend which as you know i like my weekends mm-hmm. so it was a little tougher paid your bar tab though yep <laughs> <laughs> almost <laughs> yeah the eight bucks an hour i got well, that, for it that was a joke in our house because he would get subway in between his baseball double headers and basically <laughs> All the time he worked the first yeah. game, he would spend it on his Subway sandwich. <laughs> yeah. Get one. But the best part-time job, uh, I want to say maybe... The pig fo- the pig factory? No, yeah, that was a pretty good part-time job, doing the paperwork with Marty. But honestly, another good part-time job was I worked for my cousin's gym. That was like my first ever like legit job where I would do like, I would clean it, but I'd also work the front desk, sign up like memberships and all that stuff. So that was fun because it was a brand new gym. So I was also like helping out the family in a way too. Cool. So mm-hmm. You didn't work in any food industry jobs? No, I never worked in a kitchen, nothing. I did work huh. for my dad's nutrition company, which was brutal. <laughs> was bad about oh, it. Oh, so you're doing the same thing for hours. Like you're packaging stuff, you're mixing things, you're in the lab coat, gloves mask and you just sit there and it, and uh no one talks but you just sit there <laughs> yeah you sit there for hours and i just look at the clock every 10 minutes looking for our 10 15 break 12 o'clock lunch or 3 15 break Come over on. and over you didn't enjoy that sounds like a full-time job not a part-time it was full-time for a couple months and but, you called yeah. the quits on the old man yep last one here what do people misunderstand about you most? Oh, um, well, I think Yelly kind of said it earlier with the misorganization or chaos with a lot of things. Um, I do plan out a ton of, I plan pretty much every single thing in my life almost. <laughs> we know. Um, hence the last guy getting married down the line. Um, a decade from now. The meals I eat. Um, I heard you planning your day today already. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, yeah, he's having leftovers tonight. He's working out when he gets home from the office, and then he's not eating until 7.30. Yeah, I I like to plan. I just find it 
easier. It can be like the littlest thing of, all right, I'm going to go put this away in my house when I get home at this time. And then when I do that, I'm going to go do this. It's just like, it's sometimes things don't go according to plan, but I just like having a base plan to follow. Mm. Yeah. But yeah. I lied. We have one more. <laughs> this is a text in question um, from the hotline. And <laughs> what's it like being a single hockey guy? Ooh, oh, spicy question. There were a lot oh. of questions in the uh, responses. Is for a single, is for a single. And so what's it like? <laughs> yeah, well, obviously a lot of the guys have their own girlfriends, but no, I do not have a girlfriend. And I definitely get some interesting messages from people, which are pretty funny sometimes. But uh, for the most part, I've enjoyed it. I like to do my own thing a lot. Um especially when it comes to traveling or kind of having that more so freedom type deal, I guess. Um, but yeah, I've, I'd say I've enjoyed it. It definitely makes things interesting for uh, the group as well. We can't all be taken. There needs to be a little hope for some people. <laughs> but uh, yeah, me and Johnny are the last ones left now officially. So we'll see what happens there. But yeah, can't complain. Love it, man. I think you you nailed everything that we wanted to ask. <laughs> you did it, man. You're a lot easier to interview than I thought. I thought yeah, we were going to have to pry a little bit. Well, I would like to say one last thing. <laughs> Wait, we can just... No, no, just cut this part. Mm-hmm. I just want to explain my cooking story a bit better. Go ahead. Yeah, go we'll chop it. it. Yeah, we'll chop it yeah, out. Better chop it, Lawson. We will. Mark it. I don't want this in there. None of this is getting <laughs> chopped. Frizz, okay. I got you. Don't okay. worry. I'll chop it for you. But yeah, no, it's been fun, Will. It's really been fun, kind of sharing my story. Yeah, I really appreciate it. I got one more question for you, Frizz, before we sign out here. Okay. You touched on it briefly today, but I know there's a lot more to this story, so why don't you tell us the full cooking story, especially back in your college days. Okay. Well, yeah, I started, I've always kind of cooked when I was young, like as a kid, just raw, like eggs or whatever. Just I've always kind of enjoyed the, the kitchen. But when I really got into cooking was when I started to watch the Food Network Mm. and I would watch Diners, Drive-Ins and Dives, um, Beat Bobby Flay, Chopped, and I would just see the food they're making and I would just want to recreate it. So I would just watch those shows over and over again and then I would be like, hey, I'm going to make this. So then I would go into the kitchen, I would ask my mom to maybe grab certain things and I would just try and recreate it and then again playing junior hockey college you're kind of on your own for a lot of meals um so i would cook for myself quite often and then when the hockey guys started to take off a bit and we started to do our own tiktoks that's when i kind of thought hey i love to do this it doesn't really have anything to do with the group or the hockey guys it's kind of my own thing so why not start a cooking food content based channel and that's where the social media part of it came in and where I really dove in to uh, fall in love with cooking. Honestly. Yeah. It's awesome with Austin. I think we yeah. all have our own favorite meal that you make. Yeah. Mine's easily the buffalo chicken sliders. Oh, yeah. Those are a good ones. Mm-hmm. Oh, dude, if you like that, you would like his hot Cheeto chicken burger. <laughs> I'm sure that would be great. Che- cheese it fried chicken cheese sandwich. Fried, yeah. <laughs> I always was loved on the rail. I love the the Canadian Thanksgiving I always filled before the American Thanksgiving. Oh yeah, in Frizz because oh. I lived with more more Canadians than American in my house, and the whole duplex actually. Mm-hmm. Frizz and a few of the other guys would take charge and they would make a legit like Thanksgiving full on meal. Yeah, I got that two times in my life. That was fun. The pierogies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pierogies, cabbage rolls, all the good Canadian stuff. That's another thing I liked about uh, social media is showing. The Americans like Canadian traditions or holidays with either like Canada Day, uh, Canadian Thanksgiving, that kind of stuff. Because for the most part, it's similar, but there's definitely some more odd things that maybe the American people haven't seen before. Mm-hmm. So that is where my uh, cooking journey began, and that's where it is right now. Come well, a long way. Fry cook freezing, you killed it, man. Good Thank job, you. Buddy. Yeah. Thanks for the questions, everyone and fellows. And uh, we're going to give you the honors to sign us out today. And maybe 
what are you working on right now that you want to give a little hint yeah um i am 95 percent done my first ever saucing with austin cooking ebook i've Ooh. kind of been told throughout the years hey why don't you do a cookbook why don't you do a cookbook so i thought since i am more of a social media cook let's make it an ebook so it's online and available and throughout the last few months i've had the guys come over try a few things cuddy's helped me with a bunch of food lawson's helped take photos um i've written over 35 different recipes that are either drinks appetizers main meals or just snacks to have and i've made videos out of some of them some of them i have uh come up with on my own but yeah that's kind of my next big project that i'm hoping to post really soon and get that out there can't wait to get my own yeah there you go then you can be cooking like saucing with austin when you move <laughs> out <laughs> yeah oh good job for this yeah so appreciate everyone for listening if you'd like to give this podcast a share whether that be through micro content or youtube or the audio version itself we'd absolutely love that as well love when you guys ask questions whether it be through dms or answering all the things on the instagram story and yeah we appreciate you all for listening watching and now lawson sign us out kaboom see you later bummers